Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. Today we bring a story of a man betrayed by his wife and unexpectedly helped by his father-in-law in the most unexpected way. My name is Gary, 39-year-old. My ex-wife Rebecca, 33-year-old. We met at an air show. She was visiting with her father, Ronald. He is a retired Marine. We met when she was away from her father at a soda stall. It was an instant connect. We exchanged numbers and decided to meet again. After a few meetings, we started dating. After three years, I proposed and she said yes. I remember the first time I met her father. He was part of the first land operations in the Operation Desert Storm. Was involved in a lot of other military operations throughout the world. Some of them he prefers never to discuss. He has since retired and his mental health has rather deteriorated. He suffers from PTSD and some other mental issues as well. He had a very organized life, woke up on time, exercised every day, took his medicines. However, he used to wake up screaming at nights. He has a gun collection but others in the family keep them locked. He gets his guns only under supervision. There have been nights when he woke up and started behaving like he is on a mission. Rebecca and I got married and her father walked her down the aisle. He was dressed in his uniform, with all his medals that he was awarded. It was then that I realized that no matter what his mental condition is, he loved his job and was proud of his heritage. Rebecca was the only daughter and her father was the only family she had. Since he needed supervision, we decided that he stayed with us. My parents passed away a few years ago. In a way, I was looking for that father figure in my life. Not sure what life had in store for me. Rebecca joined a local marketing firm and I was working in a tech firm. We actually moved into Rebecca's father's home after marriage and decided to pay the bills in order to make up for rent. Her father was very happy at this. He just needed company. He loved telling his stories of war and how his friends were some of the best men ever. My evening routine was to come home and have a beer with the old man and I realized that he was actually happy to spend time with me and his condition had also improved. I never saw him get up at night screaming as I was previously informed. Now coming back to Rebecca. She is a beautiful and loves to get intimate with me. She at times does get a bit loud during the act and I have to cover her mouth in order to not wake up my father-in-law. Things went smooth for the next three years and life was great. Ronald was doing great and Rebecca was amazing as ever. We decided to delay having kids and we still did not want any responsibilities. We had some vacations overseas and I enjoyed every moment of it. I also used to take Ronald at the shooting range. He was like a child at in a candy shop. Once you give him a gun, he transforms into something else. He is an expert shot I must say. He has a big collection of guns and I have the key to the safe where they are kept. It was last year that I had climbed a few steps in my office and with that came some additional responsibilities and I had to spend some extra time at office. My daily routine with Ronald also took a hit. I did have dinner with him though but it was not the same. Rebecca also started to spend more time at work. A significant change that occurred was that Rebecca was being dropped by a new guy. Rebecca was now spending a lot of time on her phone and also started to go on girls night out. First time in three years. Ronald was also getting a bit depressed, as no one was with him. One day I found him roaming around the house in the middle of the night, like he is holding a gun and trying to get some bad guys. There was something off about Rebecca that I could not get. She had now reduced the intimacy in bed and was not as vocal as she was earlier, like she was not enjoying it. There was one time that she was surfing her phone while we were at it. That pissed me off and got off her and left the room. We had a big fight that day. I did not speak to her for three days and it was Ronald who actually asked me what is going on with me. I was a bit embarrassed but shared the issue with him. He said that I should not oversee the signs and check thoroughly again. I took that to the heart and planned to check Rebecca. That night when she was asleep, I went through her phone. There was nothing. I installed a spyware and mapped it on my laptop. It did not take long. The very next night I saw her texting with a guy. The texts were sexual in nature and I could make it out that she already was sleeping with him. She then proceeded to share some naked images of her with that guy. As this was going on, tears were rolling down my cheeks and anger filled my heart. I had done everything she asked for, and this is what I get. Then while reading the text further, I got to know that they were planning to get intimate the very next day, when I was supposed to go out on an official trip. I had told Rebecca about the same. I was now livid. 
I thought if I should catch her right now, or should I catch the guy and her red-handed? I was thinking about the same and suddenly saw that Rebecca had started to delete the texts. Now I know why there was nothing on her phone. I went to sleep on the couch and did not sleep in my bed that day. In the middle of the night, I saw Ronald standing near me and he put a blanket on me and went away. Next morning, I woke up and did not see Rebecca. She had left for her office. I had breakfast with Ronald and he asked me why I was sleeping in the couch. I told him that I might leave soon. He looked at me and then asked, Is Rebecca cheating on you? I was shocked and looked at him with disbelief. He then stated that he spent a long time hunting bad men. He knows a bad person when he looks one in the eyes. He then stated that since last few weeks Rebecca has not looked him in the eyes and just tried to walk past him. He further added, If I told you that she was cheating, you might have not believed me. So, I asked you to find out yourself. He then added that he has stopped taking his medicines. I asked him why. He stated that he does not need them. I then told him what I had found. I shared the images and the text. He sat there in silence and I could see tears rolling down his eyes. He looked at me. He then stated that he would not hold anything against me if I leave or divorce his daughter. I told him that I intend to catch his daughter with her AP red-handed. He stated that it is not required. You will not gain anything from it. He then requested to leave the issue there. I held a lot of respect for this man, not just because he fought for the country, but also as he was a father figure for me. I told him that I will move out of the house and file for divorce. He agreed, and the same day I packed my bags and left. In the evening, Rebecca called me twice. I did not answer. She then started texting and ignored all her texts. She did not have any clue where I was and why I had left. She still thought that I had left for my trip. If only she had spoken to her father. The next morning, I got a call from the police station asking me to come over. I was a bit scared and went there. What they informed was shocking. What they narrated was that last night Ronald shot a man inside their house. The cops said that the guy is alive but in a critical condition. He further added that the guy was naked and so was my wife, Rebecca. He stated that under the given circumstance, it seems that Ronald mistook the guy trying to assault his daughter and he shot him while saving her. He stated that I can post his bail if I want to. I bailed him out and went home with him. When we reached home, he got down and asked me to come in for a drink. I went in with him and asked where is Rebecca. He said that she is with her AP in the hospital. I asked him, what happened? He stated that since he does not take his meds he cannot sleep at night and it was the same last night. He said that the guy dropped Rebecca and did not leave and they were having SX in the kitchen. As usual Rebecca was loud. I got up, saw them in the kitchen and then got my gun and shot the guy. I asked how did he get to his guns. He then stated that he always had the keys. He let us believe that we were in control of his actions. I told him what he did is illegal and he could have killed the guy. He said that he is just a demented old man who got his hands on a gun and saved his daughter. I looked at him and stated that what if the guy died? He said that he shot him in the thigh. The shot went straight out and the bullet is still lodged in the kitchen table. The bullet talks to me. I tell it where to hit, whether to kill or just injure. I felt cold as at that moment. I felt like I was talking to a stone cold assassin. He then offered me another beer and asked me to relax. He then brought a folder and gave it to me. I opened the folder and it was his will. He has given everything to me and left his daughter out. He then stated that in a few minutes Packers will arrive and take all Rebecca's belongings to the hospital and dump it there. He then gave me a number and stated that this guy will call you in the morning and help you file for divorce. I did not know what to say. He then opened another beer bottle and asked jokingly, You are a nice kid. Can I adopt you? I just smiled and took a sip from my bottle. Rebecca kept calling me and I kept ignoring her. I got divorced and Ronald disowned her. She is now living alone. Her AP too afraid to date her again, dumped her and left town. Surprisingly, there were no charges filed on Ronald. I still feel that he pulled some strings to get that done. He is not as helpless as he looks like. Two years have passed and I have started dating a new woman and I have introduced her to Ronald as well. He seems to be fine with it. Just told me not to have SX in his kitchen. Until next time. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.